I wrote 16 songs in six hours. If you want to know how it went, then stay tuned. And let's get to it. Well, first off, I want to clarify that when I say I wrote 16 songs, I don't mean that I produced 16 full tracks for an album or something crazy like that. What I mean is I wrote a solid foundation upon which I can write a completed fleshed out idea. So for some of those songs, it's a verse, a chorus, a verse, and then two choruses. For some of those songs, it's a verse, a chorus, and a bridge. For some of them, it was a strophic concept where it just started at the beginning and then ended when it reached the end of the idea. It is 16 songs, but it is not 16 completed pieces of work. A lot of artists actually work this way. They come to the producer with this skeleton of an idea with a verse and a chorus or a verse and a bridge, and they bring it to their producer and they're like, this is the song I wanna do, but I need help finishing it. So I'm kind of approaching this situation with that idea of, I can still flesh these out more. I didn't want to complete an entire song and then say it's done and it will not be touched again, so I let a lot of things stay open-ended. As I explain the ideas behind how I made this happen, you'll understand why I decided not to close off and finish most of the tunes. So first off, I want to explain that this idea came from a book that I read called The Frustrated Songwriter's Handbook. In the Frustrated Songwriter's Handbook, Carl Coriat and Nicholas Dobson explain how the immersion method is the best method for learning a language. Now, I'm not really big on this whole music is a universal language thing because I just don't think that's true. We have so many different kinds of music that exist in the world. We don't even use microtones in the West and that alone is such a huge harmonic thing that we don't touch on, so I don't think it's universal at all. However, the idea of sheet music and composition being a language of its own that you read and write and can understand, that to me tracks to an extent. So with that idea in their minds, they decided to pursue a songwriting technique that would involve immersing yourself into music. Now to make that practically applicable as a musician with a schedule and with all the other things that go into what you have to do in order to write a song, they essentially established a game called the 20 song game. Now I'm not going to give you all the details of how it works because I would definitely not explain it as well as they explain it in the book, so I would highly recommend just getting the book for yourself. In this section of the video, I'm going to outline some of the basic principles that went into what was explained in the book. Firstly, you're supposed to work for 12 hours in an isolated area. You can take small breaks, but the idea is that you're supposed to be 12 hours straight of writing with just small intervals of rest in between. Meaning take a walk outside, grab some food, something simple and short that's not going to keep you from being able to get back on task. During these 12 hours, your goal is to write 20 songs, but it's not just to write 20 songs. It's to write more songs than the other musicians that are participating with you. Now it's very, very unlikely you'll actually hit 20 songs because it's just a lot. However, with a clear goal in mind, you're more likely to be successful. So 20 songs is just the round number that they came up with. You're not supposed to come into the game with any preconceived ideas. You can have a chord progression with one line or a couple lines or something small like that, but no completed verses or no completed ideas. Just small snippets are fine. You're also not supposed to restrict yourself. So in other words, if you write something and you immediately think that sucked, I should stop. Don't, just keep going. Trust your instincts to write it for you. Don't stress about it. Even if you're not experienced or even if you're not very well versed in your instrument yet, you should just trust your instincts and just write what comes out of you. And again, an idea doesn't have to be completely fleshed out for it to be considered a song in the game. There is also an instruction in the book to not have any other goals in mind while you're doing the session. 
For me personally, it helped me a lot to have a camera and a microphone and all of that set up so that way I could quickly record what I was playing and remember it as well as have an idea of some content that I could use later for my YouTube channel and for my personal music. So I took what was working for me from the book and I made it my own. This time I played the game with my girlfriend Kalissa and my friend Steven. We adjusted the rules a little bit to suit our personalities and our schedules. So the adjustments we made were that we reduced it to six hours instead of 12. The first couple times I played this, I played it with just my girlfriend, Kalissa, and we did eight hours. And that was great, except that after a while, we felt like our creative juices were burnt out. And in the book, they talk about how that's a place you want to be because it'll force you to write more. Unfortunately for me, that was not the case. I felt like by the time I got to the end of the eight hours, the urgency of it had worn off. So I wasn't writing just everything that came to mind. And then I started to get really in my head about what I was writing. So it just, it didn't suit me to go that long. We reduced it to six hours and then I was more likely to get at least one song an hour. The other adjustment we made was to account for the virus. We decided that it would be better if we communicated over a Zoom call instead of getting together afterwards to talk about our songs. So how many songs did you get? I'm like six. Six? Yeah. That's one per hour, dude. Do you recognize how awesome that is? But I mean, Calissa just emailed me like 40 emails of songs. No. Yeah, he I actually won either. this time then. I got 16. Oh my God. I don't even know how he did that. I was like. <laughs> When we were talking about our songs, we agreed that there would be no negative critiques of anything. You are not allowed to say anything bad about anyone else's songs. You can make small suggestions if the other person is open to it, and you can make a lot of compliments, and honestly, it's super easy to compliment people. Ooh, that last chord was, ooh, I like that. Okay, you need the, the creepy, um, accordion <laughs> circus. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, it, that's yeah, it. Totally. That's totally. Yeah. You'll be shocked at the ideas you come up with and you'll also be shocked at what your musician friends come up with. Some of the stuff that Steven and Kalissa came up with was just mind-blowingly good. And the crazy thing about it is that because we're all artists and musicians, we all have this tendency to lean towards imposter syndrome, which is that idea of it's never good enough, or I'm not a real artist, or my songs aren't good, or these melodies are bad, or whatever. And the reality is, you're probably a really talented person and you should just accept the art that you make as what it is and be proud of it. You'll be surprised how many of the subtle things that you do in your songwriting that you know no one is gonna notice and one of your partners in the game points it out immediately when you're done listening. Honestly, being able to communicate openly in this vulnerable of a way with other songwriters has been a huge, huge, huge blessing for me. I used to feel very self-conscious about my songwriting and I feel much stronger now having gotten the opportunity to share it in a safe environment. So I recommend this method for anyone, especially if you're like me and you have ADHD and these kind of isolated sessions work better for your hyper-focused mind. One of the things that helped me a lot was being able to switch around to different instruments. So I had a piano set up, I had my guitar, I had a bass, and I just kind of played around with those different ideas until I found something I liked, and then I would just dig in and write whatever words came to mind. And I was honestly surprised by how many times the lines that came out were actually pretty good in my opinion. I know normally I only really talk about guitar and music theory, but I really enjoyed this piece that I wrote on bass this last songwriting game. So I'm going to show you that one right after this. I would love to answer any questions you had about the process, and I'd also love your feedback on the song. So please leave me a comment with either of those things. Remember to like and subscribe and let me know if you have any super secret songwriting sauce techniques that work great for you, because I want them. I recorded all my songs on my camera, so I'm gonna share one with you right now that's directly from that day. Keep in mind, this is, you know, four or five hours into a songwriting marathon, essentially. So I am exhausted. I'm playing bass and tapping and singing at the same time. So it was just, it's a lot, but I really thought that I came up with a nice song for this. So I'm just gonna show you the raw, vulnerable footage from my songwriting session. I hope you enjoy it. But you didn't care 
pave the roads to make our travels easy But it's a two-way street I thought I made it simple You took the wheel And slammed us into everything you could You understood What you did and how I'd feel But I still carried you Down this two-way street